If you're working with a notation program like Dorico, it can be really frustrating to get the formatting set up just the way you want it every time you start a new song. But with Dorico's user template feature, you have the ability to create your own templates and spend less time formatting and more time making music. Hi friends, and welcome back to Finishing the Score. My name is Julie Richardson. I am a musical theater composer and orchestrator, and I make videos about composing, music software, and I share progress and behind the scenes videos of my projects along the way. If that sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and hit subscribe. With the release of Dorico 4, they released a new feature called User Templates, and I am a big fan of how much time this saves me when I start a new song. We're gonna take a look at my songwriting template and take a look under the hood at how it's built. Let's go. I happen to live in the world of musical theater, so the template we're going to be looking at today is a piano vocal score, but you can create a user template with whatever instrumentation you choose. All right, let's create a new project using this template. Here we are in Dorico on the Create New section. Um, my template lives under a section that I created called Songwriting. Here is my template. Um, you have the ability of setting a project title and composer here and a number of other uh, features. I'm just going to go ahead and hit create project right now. Right off the bat we can see we have the layout name in the top left corner. We've got song name with a subtitle for a revision date in the middle and then on the top right you have project name. This is where the name of your musical would go if you're writing a musical. Uh, right below it we've got a number that is for the number in the piano vocal score if you're actually uh, if you're writing a musical and numbering your pieces. Below that, we've got the uh, composer and lyricist credits, and then we've got our music. We've got three staves, we've got our lead vocal, and we've got piano. Uh, notice that the full name is written out for each of the parts at the beginning, and then we are abbreviated for the remaining ones. I got the inspiration for this particular format from a Maestra virtual technical workshop run by Emily Grishman. Emily is a very accomplished music copyist who's done music layouts for numerous Broadway shows. Even though the workshop was specifically about layout and formatting in Finale, I found a lot of useful tips on score formatting that I incorporated into this layout. And if you're interested in checking out that virtual technical workshop, it's available for rental on Vimeo for $10. Uh, link in the description below. All right, starting in setup mode, I want to point out three things. On the left panel, we have the players. We've got our lead vocal and the piano. You can click and drag to change the instruments in the order if you want, uh, and it will be reflected in your score. On the bottom panel, we see flows in the project. Right now, there's only one flow called flow one. If the project was just a single song, that's all I would need. But this template is designed so that you can use it for a multi-song project like the score to a musical. In that case, each song would have its own flow. And you can add a new flow by clicking this Add Flow icon. And on the right panel, we have three layouts, which are a piano vocal, piano vocal for blind submissions, and a lead sheet. Uh, when you select a given layout, you can select which instruments are included in the layout. So for example, for the piano vocal score, both the vocal and piano are in there, but for the lead sheet, uh, the piano is omitted and it's just the vocal. You can change which layout you're looking at using the drop down on the top right here. Um, so for example, if I go to the blind submissions one, you can see that the layout name in the top left has changed and also the uh, the composer and lyricist credits have been removed. That's the only change between uh, the two, but it makes it really easy for me if I'm doing a submission for this song to just go ahead, go into this layout and uh, create a PDF of it rather than having to manually edit the original to get rid of those every time I need a blind submission copy. Now I'm going to go back into write mode. Um, I can use control two as a shortcut to get into write mode. So this template is designed that the information filled out at the top is populated in the project info panel. I can get to that by hitting control I and you'll see here on the left, you can select either at the project level or the flow level. And those fields that are filled in at the project level are the ones that are uh, populating in the template here. So for example, project name, I can enter my musical to the lighthouse here. I can change composer to myself and lyricist to my uh, collaborator. Um, and that's it for the project level. And I go to flow, I can change the name of the songs here. Uh, so let's say 
I'm working on a song called Lily's Vision, and I'm going to do a date revision uh, of today's date. And then the last thing that I can enter is a work number. So let's say it's the second uh, work number in my show. I can hit apply uh, and close all of that. And now we can see that all of the information has been populated into our template. I've made a couple of changes to the formatting of this template and layout options that I want to point out. We can get to layout options either by going to library, layout options, or hitting control shift L. The first is to turn off flow headings. So here I go to page setup flows. And when it says show flow he headings, I'm going to change it to ne never. I'm going to show you what it would look like if I said for all flows, hit apply. Um, now we've got the flow heading is it, it sort of jumped down here and it's not populated as part of the template anymore. And I also want to point out that you can change these uh, layout settings uh, independently for each of the uh, different layouts here on the right. So uh, the piano vocal and the lead sheet can have different settings, for example. I also want to point out uh, in under page setup and page margins that you can actually set your page margins to be different depending on different pages. And so I've set up a left and right sheet that have slightly different margins. The top and bottom are the same, um, but for the sheet on the left, uh, there's very little uh, margin on the left, but more on the right to give room for hole punching and vice versa on the right. Now let's move into engrave mode to take a look at how to set up a page layout like this. I hit control three to get to engrave mode. You're going to see all sorts of uh, lines surrounding what are called frames here. Each of these uh, items is considered a frame of a different kind, either a text frame, a music frame, etc. Um, it is so easy when you're trying to set up a layout to just start, you know, clicking on frames uh, and making changes, you know, uh, moving things around, whatnot. But it's really important that you don't do it here because you cannot save changes here as a template. You have to do your template changes uh, using the panel on the side. All right, on the right hand panel, there's a couple of drop downs. One is page templates, but um, I want to first take a look at page template sets. So here we have a couple that I created for this template default full score, default part, default piano vocal, blind submissions, and default piano vocal. For each layout in which you want a different page template, you can create a new page template set. Uh, this allows you to create a first page and a second page that are uh, paired to each other for each layout. And once you have the page template sets uh, created that you want, uh, you can go up here to the page templates panel and actually make changes to the templates. So you can see the template the, the page template sets that we listed below are in this drop down so depending on which one you select you uh, can make changes to that so i'm on default piano vocal we're looking at the piano vocal layout so this is going to affect uh, this one if we make changes to it and for each of the page template sets you're going to want a first page layout and a default page layout. The first one, as you can imagine, is going to be for the first page of your score. Um, so you can create headings and things like that. And the default is for all of the remaining pages of your score. So, so typically you're going to have a reduced size header um, and have some sort of information up there that's a little bit different from the first page. So the correct way to make edits to the template is to select the layout over here and use this uh, pencil icon to edit the template. Now it can look a little crazy in here when you first uh, explore the templates, uh, but I promise it's not that intimidating. Uh, this formatting is for what is called a uh, token in Dorico. It's essentially uh, something that Dorico is going to auto populate a variable uh, from uh, your project settings into that. That's how the information gets populated from this project info window into the template. I want to call out the difference between a project and a flow token. So that's going to correspond as well to the project settings or the flow settings, uh, because notice you can have a composer at the project level, but you can also have composer at the flow level. And so this is going to tell you uh, whether you want the project title or the flow title. So you can see here in the top right that I've got project title. 
uh, and that pulls from the project panel, whereas flow title, this pulls from the flow panel, um, and that's where it gets the song name. You can add a new frame for text with uh, the buttons over here. Uh, go to frames and then text. And you could sort of just draw it in. If you double click on it, you can start typing. So let's, let's add a token. Um, so curly brace at um, flow um, composer, for example, and then at and close curly bracket. And by default, uh, this is using the default text formatting, but you can always change it to something else. For example, project name, um, that's the formatting that I've got up here. So it automatically uh, moved it to the right because it knew that that was the correct formatting for that. The formatting for those is set up in the library paragraph styles window. Um, you can see here's the default text, but what we just looked at was the project name. I also want to point out that when you're editing a template, uh, it shows you both a left and a right version of that template. And this allows you, for example, to change which corner the page number is, is on. If you all, always want it on the outer corner, um, for example, uh, let's say in the footer, you could put a page number down here and a page number down here. Um, you can see that it says copy page layout left to right or right to left. So if I click this one, it's going to add our new box here to the other side. I'm going to hit apply and just get out of this so we can see what that did. Okay, so we can see that our frame is here, but it is empty right now because I actually don't have any content in Flow Composer. Um, so I'm going to add um, uh, Steven Sondheim uh, to that Composer uh, field hit close, and now we can see that uh, that populated there. So quick summary, to create your own template, the first thing you're gonna do is go to setup, add the instruments that you want, the players that you want. Um, you're gonna make sure you have at least one flow, uh, and you're gonna set up the layouts you want. You are going to go to the project info panel and fill out any information that you want populated every time you create the template. Then you are going to go into uh, the layout settings, control shift L, uh, and you're going to, by layout, uh, adjust the settings, uh, mostly under page setup and players, uh, maybe saves and systems. You're, you can adjust these, these settings to whatever you want that to be populated every time. And then the final thing you want to do is to go to engrave mode, create a page template set for each of your layouts, and for each of those page template sets, create both a first and a default uh, page template. Once you've done all of those things, you can go to File, Save as Project Template. Now you're gonna get this window. You're gonna pick which category. One thing that I like to do is preserve existing flows and preserve project info. So if you populated anything into that project window uh, that you want to come along when you create the template, you will need to have those selected in order for that to happen and you go ahead and click save. I'm gonna close this, discard, and now when I create new, uh, my test template is there. I go ahead and create project, and we can see that uh, some of the changes that I made, made to this template uh, have populated in automatically up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, and you may also be interested in checking out my video about importing MIDI from Cubase into Dorico. Happy composing and see you next time. Bye. Finishing.